Hello everybody, welcome back to SSB Crack Exams. I am Anuradha and in this particular session, I am here to give you a very important update regarding the notification for Indian Navy Direct Entry SSC Officer. And this notification is for the course which is going to commence from June 2023. So let's look into what this particular notification has been mentioning which is published by the Indian Navy already. So the Indian Navy has uh, invited applications uh, from unmarried eligible men and women candidates for granting the short service commission or SSC commission entry for off Indian Navy under special naval orientation course which is going to start from June 2023 onwards at the Indian Naval Academy that is INA Ezimala. Kerala. The online application for this particular entry has already been opened and you can now avail this particular uh, you know, application by visiting the Indian Navy's official website which is www.joinindiannavy.gov.in. The application has been opened from 21st of October. The last date to submit the application is 6th November 2022. So now we are also going to look that the selected under uh, candidates will undergo training in which courses. So the selected candidates will undergo training with one of the following two distinct courses. First is extended naval orientation course. So under it you will have general service executive GSX or hydrography branch or you could also go for naval orientation course regular where you could get the uh, you know you could get into the branches of pilot, naval air operations officer air traffic controller, logistics, education, technical including engineering and electrical and naval constructor branches. Now, the question that may arise in your mind is who can apply for Indian Navy SSC officer June 2023 course? Now, if you're a candidate who have graduated or post-graduated or in the final year with minimum 60% marks in aggregate or equivalent CGPA, you are eligible. Not only that, the university for the above mentioned degrees should be incorporated by an act of central or state legislature in India or other educational institutions established by an act of parliament or declared to be deemed as universities or autonomous universities under UGC Act 1956, IIT Act 1961, AICTE Act 1987, NIT SER Act 2007 and Triple IT Act 2014. Or you could also have obtained a degree in engineering with 60% marks in aggregate or equivalent CGPA system from such foreign university, college or institution. But make sure that if you are getting the degree from such foreign university, college or institution, it should be recognized by the government of India for the purpose of engineering degree or equivalent certificate from Association of Indian Universities established under AIU Act 1973. So if you are eligible, you can check these criteria if you're eligible you can very well start your application process now we are going to discuss now the most important thing to consider and that is for how many branches you are having how many vacancies so the vacancies have already been finally updated by the indian navy in this particular notification so if you are going for executive branch specifically for the general service that is gsx or hydrocator then there are 40 vacancies for men both men and women can apply. I'm going to give you gender-wise vacancies. So for men, there are 40 vacancies where 36 vacancies are there for general service and four vacancies for hydro cater. And you should be born between 2nd July 1998 to 1st January 2004. If you are a woman candidate, then there are 16 vacancies offered for women candidates, where 14 vacancies are offered for general service and two for hydrocator. Okay, so your uh, date of birth also should be between 2nd July 1998 and 1st January 2004. Also, if you are a merchant navy personnel and you want to apply for the general service or hydro cadre branches and you are having Ministry of Shipping and Transport Certificate of Competency foreign going either as a second mate, mate or master, then your date of birth can also be between 2nd July 1993 and 1st January 2004, both dates inclusive. So for merchant navy personnels, you have a relaxation of age. Now, if you want to go for air traffic controller or ATC, there are five vacancies for both male and female candidates and your date of birth should be between 2nd July 1998 and 1st July 2002, both dates inclusive. 
coming to the naval air operations officer that is erstwhile observer branch your vacancy should be 15 for both men and women but 12 are reserved for men candidates and 3 for women candidates your date of birth should be between 2nd july 1999 and 1st july 2004 both dates inclusive for pilot branch again men and women uh, can apply for this particular branch and there are 25 vacancies 22 are for men and 3 are for women. Your date of birth should be between 2nd January 1999 and 1st January 2004, both dates inclusive. Now, if you are applying for pilot branch and you are currently holding valid and current commercial pilot license issued by DGCA India, then your date of birth can have a relaxation and your date of birth, if you are eligible, if you are having this uh, CPL, then your date of birth can be between 2nd July 1998 and 1st July 2004, both dates inclusive and you can apply for pilot entry. Coming to the next branch is logistics branch and for logistics branch again both men and women can apply. There are 20 vacancies to be filled up. There are 14 vacancies for men and 6 vacancies available for women candidates. And for logistics branch your date of birth should be between 2nd July 1998 and 1st January 2004. Now we have completed going through the vacancies, the uh, gender that is who can apply for this particular branches and also age eligibility criteria. Now we are going to go to the next branch which is education branch. Now there are different education branch, uh, different qualifications are needed so we will discuss these qualifications later. According to the qualifications, there are 12 vacancies which are available for this branch. Both men and women candidates can apply. Now for MTech, if you are having an MTech degree, then your date of birth should be between 2nd July 1996 and 1st July 2002. So for those uh, particular departments where MTech is a necessity, MTech is an educational qualification, necessary educational qualification, your date of birth can be between 2nd July 1996 and 1st July 2002. However, there are also other uh, qualifications for other posts. And so for other qualifications, your date of birth should be between 2nd July 1998 and 1st July 2002. Now we will move on to the next branch which is technical branch. So let's check out the age, age, age eligibility, gender as well as the vacancies for this branch. So under this branch, if you want to apply for engineering branch, general service, then both men and women can apply. There are 25 vacancies to be filled up, 18 for men and 7 for women. The date of birth should be between 2nd July 1998 and 1st January 2004, both dates inclusive. Now again here, Merchant Navy personnels who are having Government of India Ministry of Shipping and Transport Certificate of Competency as first class engineer of a steamship by the government can apply. And for Merchant Navy personnel for this particular branch, they can also have an age relaxation and their date of birth can be between 2nd July 1993 and 1st January 2004, both dates inclusive. Okay. Now, for electrical branch, general service, there are 45 vacancies, 32 for men and 13 for women. And both men and women can apply. The date of birth should be between 2nd July 1998 and 1st January 2004. For naval constructor branch, 14 vacancies are allotted for both men and women candidates. And their date of birth can be between 2nd July 1998 and 1st Jan 2004. Now, we will move on to the next criteria to consider that is educational qualification criteria. Again, branch wise, we will discuss the criteria. So for executive branch, general service or hydro cater, you should have a BE or BTEC with minimum 60% marks. For air traffic controller, that is ATC, naval air operations officer or erstwhile observer and pilot, you should have a BE or BTEC in any discipline with minimum 60% marks. Also make sure that you are, you are having 60% aggregate marks in class 10 and 12 and minimum 60% marks in English in class 10 or in class 12. So this has to be also taken into consideration. Now for logistics branch, you could have a BE or BTEC in any discipline with first class or MBA with first class or BSc, BCom, BSc in IT with first class along with PG diploma in finance, logistics, supply chain management or material management or you could also have an MCA or MSc in IT with first class. Okay, so any of these four eligibility criteria are there for logistics. Moving on to the next branch is education branch and here you could either have a 60% marks in MSc, Maths or Operational Research with Physics in BSc and for this particular qualification there are three vacancies. Uh, you could also have a 60% marks in MSc Physics or Applied Physics with Maths in BSc and for this qualification two vacancies are available. 
Uh, 60% marks in MSc Chemistry with Physics and BSc is also available for this qualification one vacancy is there. You could also have a BE or BTech with minimum 60% marks in Mechanical Engineering and for this you have two vacancy. For people having BE or BTech with minimum 60% marks in Electronics and Communication or Electrical and Electronics or Electronics and Instrumentation or Electronics and Telecommunications or Electrical Engineering, you have two vacancies. Now, if you're having 60% marks in MTech from a recognized university or institute in any of the following disciplines like manufacturing or production engineering or metallurgical engineering or material science, you have two vacancies. Also, candidates who are applying for the education entry must have scored minimum 60% marks in class 10 and class 12 and a minimum 60% marks in English in class 10 or 12. So, this is also an important thing to consider for education branch as well. Moving to the next branch is obviously uh, the next branch, which is the technical branch here. And for technical branch, engineering branch, general service, you, could, you should have a BE or BTEC with minimum 60% marks in mechanical or mechanical with automation, marine, instrumentation, production, aeronautical, industrial engineering and management, control engineering, aerospace, automobiles, metallurgy, mechatronics, instrumentation and control. For electrical branch, you should have a B or B tech with minimum 60% marks in electrical, electronics, electrical and electronics, electronics and communication, electronics and telecommunication, telecommunication, applied electronics and communication, AEC, instrumentation, electronics and instrumentation, instrumentation and control, applied electronics and instrumentation, power engineering, power electronics. For naval constructor, you should have a BE or BTEC with minimum 60% marks in mechanical or mechanical with automation, civil, aeronautical, aerospace, metallurgy, naval architecture, ocean engineering, marine engineering, ship technology, ship building or ship design. Okay, so I hope that you have noted down all the important streams of engineering. Please make sure that any other streams that you are having which are not mentioned here will not be eligible. So it's very important that you're checking it out. Okay, now moving on to very importantly eligibility criteria for NCC cert the candidates. Okay, so if you're an NCC candidate, there are important provisions for you. So let's check it out. So NCC C certificate holders will be given a relaxation of 5% in cutoff marks towards shortlisting for SSB subject to following criteria. So if you're having an NCC C certificate of Naval, Army, Air Wing with minimum B grade, you're eligible for this particular provision. And you should not have served less than two academic years in the senior division Naval Army Air Wing of the NCC. You should also have a C certificate which is not dated prior to 1st June 2020. And the final selection will be subject to verification of the certificate by DGNCC or concerned NCC units for its validity. Okay, after matching all these criteria, you can apply for the provisions which are provided for NCC candidates. Now. Once you filled up the application form, you need to prepare for the SSB interview since it's a direct entry. So we have provided SSB interview online course, which is only, uh, you know, you can enroll yourself through the particular app that we have, which is SSB Crack Exams Learning App. So if you have not downloaded this app yet, please go to the Google Play Store and download this app and you can start your enrolling for this particular course. Because in this course, we have covered the entire SSB interview procedure along with very good lectures, study materials and practice sets for SSB interview preparation. Not only that, we are also providing every month SSB interview live classes which take place regularly where you can interact directly with our top-notch recommended tutors and you can also practice and improve yourself for your upcoming SSB interview. Now, there are also important points to remember, so we'll discuss it one by one. Now, if you're applying for only one branch, for per candidate, only one application is app is applicable. Okay? You cannot apply more than uh, one, you know, particular application. Now, approximately 3,000 candidates who have chosen SSC pilot entry will be considered for SSB or CPSS or aviation medical exam. The remaining candidates will be considered for other entries chosen by them. Now, candidates also should indicate their preference of other branches or cadres if they wish to be considered for those branches or cadres also. Candidates will not be considered for branches or cadres that they have not selected. So please also mention your preference for other branches, okay? Candidates are advised to ascertain their eligibility for branches or cadres with respect to applicable medical standards prior to indicating their preference. You can check the medical standards for each branch and please mention your preferences for each branch or cadre but first, you have to check your eligibility criteria also. So all these medical standards have been mentioned already inside the notification. So you can check the notification for this particular uh, entry, which we have already uploaded through our app. Now, 
also candidate who will be allocated branches or cadres based on their merit and preference subject to fulfilling other criterion such as education, medical standards, etc. So all these criteria will be taken into consideration and only after that they will be allocated branches or cadres. Now no equivalent stream of BE, BTEC or other qualification other than those which I mentioned just now will be considered valid for selection process at any stage. So that's why I said that you need to check out whether you're having eligibility conditions as per the streams, the engineering streams that you have studied. Other streams that if you have studied and which I have not mentioned in this uh, session are not eligible, okay? Now, let us also look into selection procedure. As I have already mentioned, it's a direct entry. So straight cut, you are going to just apply for this entry and you will be shortlisted. So how will you be shortlisted or how will your application be shortlisted for SSB? Let's check it out. So the applications will be shortlisted based on normalized marks, which you will obtain in the qualifying degree. So the marks that you'll obtain in the qualifying degree will be normalized using a formula, which has been mentioned in the Join Indian Navy website. So you can check out the normalization formula. Now the candidates who have already completed or in the final year of BEB Tech, marks up to the fifth semester will be considered for SSB shortlisting. If you have already completed MSc, MCA, MBA or MTech, then marks of all semesters uh, will be considered. For candidates who are in final year of these particular degrees, shortlisting will be based on pre-final year performance. Now, candidates who will be selected in the final merit list will be required to submit the proof of completing the qualifying degree with minimum 60% marks by sending an email at the officer at the rate navy.gov.in. So don't think that they will not check, okay? They will obviously check. Once you have been shortlisted in the SSB, they will tell you to send a mail to this particular email address with your uh, proof of qualifying the particular eligible degree okay with minimum 60 percent mark so make sure you are not duping yourself or others now candidates who will fail to meet the criteria will not be permitted to join the academy so obviously you don't want to do that so don't think that okay they will not check they will obviously check uh, it will be checked at every step so please uh, don't dupe yourself or others now shortlisted candidates will be informed about the selection of ssb interview through their email or sms that is the number or the email id that you will provide while you are filling up the application for so therefore, do not change your registered email ID or mobile number till the selection process is over because any kind of communication uh, that will be sent to you will be on your phone number, on your uh, mobile number or your registered email ID. Okay, now. Once you are, uh, you know, recommended in the SSB, then you have to uh, appear for medical. So all the SSB recommended candidates need to undergo medical examination as applicable to their particular entry. And then you have to wait for the final merit list, which will be prepared based on your SSB marks for all entries as per availability of vacancies for respective entry. And if you are seen that you are medically fit, then you will be appointed the, or allocated branches or cadre as per the available of vacancies in that particular entry. Then we will also know about tenure of commission. So selected candidates will be granted short service commission initially for 10 years, after which it will be extended for a maximum of four years in two terms. That is in, in the sec, in the uh, 11th year, two years will be increased. And then the next year, two years more will be increased. So in two ways, two terms, two, two years will increase. That is maximum four years can be increased after serving for 10 years. And it is all subjected to also it will be extended subject to service requirement, performance, medical eligibility and willingness of the candidate. So minimum you can serve for 10 years and then uh, four years can be extended pertaining to all these criteria. Okay, now talking about training regime, candidates will be inducted in the rank of sub-lieutenant. So you will be given the first rank, which is sub-lieutenant as soon as you join the academy. Only unmarried candidates are eligible for training, okay? So do not get married, obviously, after getting selected and you'll think, okay, now I've, I've been selected, I can get married and then I'll join the academy. No, it is not permitted. Okay, training is only for the unmarried candidates now. Officers of extended NOC, general service or executive and hydro will undergo 44 weeks of training at INA followed by professional training at naval ships and training establishments. Officers of regular NOC, all branches will undergo 22 weeks of naval orientation course. Candidates who fail to qualify the flying training that is pilot or observers will not be retained in service. Okay, so this is a, an unfortunate thing. Now. Next, we come to the important information is the probation period. Okay, so probation is very important. Most of the candidates, they ask for this probation period, basically. So probation period for all officers, for all branches or cadres is two years. 
and the probation period will start from the date of the grant of rank of sub lieutenant so the day you will be granted the rank of sub lieutenant your probation period starts and it will end after 2 years for all entries or on completion of initial training whichever is later now during probation the officers are liable to be discharged in case of unsatisfactory performance at any stage so if uh, they think that your performance is not up to the mark then you can be discharged also now to end this particular session now the question may arise that how to apply okay how to apply for this particular entry so first of all you need to remember that all applications are online and they are accepted only through online mode and also you need to click on the online application button once you log in to their official website which is www.joinindiannavy.gov.in also i will uh, once more give you the dates so that you can remember the application process for this particular entry for june 2023 course has already started which is 21st october 2022 so all of you people can start your application because the last date to submit the application for this entry is 6 november 2022 so make sure you are applying well beforehand and not waiting for the very final date okay now to end this particular session also i'm going to show you that our ssb interview live classes for november batch is going to start from 1st of november and from december batch also it's going to start from 1st of december so i would suggest you to get yourself enrolled as soon as you are uh, completing your application process for this entry get yourself enrolled into our ssb interview online course which is the best course in the entire market and uh, please start attending the live classes for the november batch from the 1st of november itself okay that will be really very helpful also if you are preparing for any other written defense exams like nda cds or afcat please make sure you also attending our regular live classes for nda cds and afcat 1 2023 exam which is taking place regularly so you can see the time table uh, by uh, which uh, the classes are held okay so you can find the live classes or join or uh, you can find the link to join these live classes through your uh, through the through our app as well okay Also, if you are planning to go for SSB interviews one after the other throughout the uh, year, okay, a lot of SSB interviews pending up, and you want to, uh, you know, be on the loop, then we have provided a one-year full access to our SSB interview online course, which is available again through our app. So download our app today, get yourself enrolled for one year. to this particular course and you can get yourself updated every month you can join our live classes every month and you can keep yourself on the loops and keep on improving yourself and uh, going and taking the ssb interview okay and last but not the least is to use the code warrior 10 to get an extra 10% off on any of these courses so if you want to get yourself enrolled into any written exam course or ssb interview agar aap ek defense aspirant hain aur ssb interview NDA, CDS, FCAT जैसे एग्जाम्स के लिए प्रिपेयर कर रहे हैं तो आप एस एस बी क्रैक एग्जाम के कोर्स को चेक करना ना भूलें आप हमारी लर्निंग एप्लीकेशन को Google Play Store से भी डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं